Hey there, I'm Aaron Waller. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about Wonder Woman 1984. Now this one is very interesting. It was released simultaneously in both theaters as well as on HBO Max for a limited time on Christmas Day. So if you want to check it out on HBO Max, if you have a subscription, you most certainly can. Or you can go watch it in theaters. Eventually it will be out on physical, so that's why they're taking it off of HBO Max. But that's beside the point. Today I wanted to do an actual review of Wonder Woman 1984. And it's very interesting because as within the last like 12 hours, 24 hours that it's been out as of the recording of this, a lot has changed in what people have perceived to be Wonder Woman 1984. Now one of the most interesting things that happened is that originally this movie was certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. However, after its release, after the critics got done with it and actual people got to watch it, the score kind of plummeted below that level. So they actually had to take it away, which is never necessarily a good thing you want to have. Maybe critics did like it. For the most part, I didn't. And we're gonna get into why in this video. Now, before we even get into some of the negatives, let's try and get some positivity going first uh, before we jump into that. So something that I did like, I felt like Kristen Wiig and Pedro Pascal did pretty good for the most part as the villains in the first half. Once you sort of got to the second half, it became a little bit too much. It wasn't the characters that I necessarily wanted. And I felt like they got a little bit, at least Pedro Pascal got way too hungry in terms of what his character wanted to do. And then his development and where his character ended, it just didn't feel that great. Like it, he felt like he learned a lesson all of a sudden, like he didn't know this was happening. And Kristen Wiig's character, we hit a point where it's a character that's one of Diana Prince's best villains, and then they immediately took that away, and it just sort of left you be like, what is happening? And most of that movie is what is happening. But for the most part, those characters, those actors, actually did a pretty good job for the majority of the movie. Another positive that I have to take away is Gal Gadot did fine as Wonder Woman. I feel like she was a little bit stronger in the first one, but I felt like the return of Chris Pine as Steve Trevor was really good. But his, the way he comes back was handled very poorly. I didn't like that at all. The whole movie centers around a wish and wishes. And the way that he comes back, it felt very... It did have an 80s vibe to it. Like, this was just so absurd. I don't know why this is working for this storyline. And why everybody seemed to forget a lot of what was happening. It just didn't sit well with me. I was glad to see Chris Pine back. But having that undertone of how he came back and what he's actually doing it just didn't sit right with me and I didn't like that very much but I did enjoy seeing him back having that back and forth with Diana I do feel like they actually have a fairly good relationship obviously it's a movie but the characters actually do work very well together and I like that a lot about this one and I think that's just about where all the positivity ends for the most part the rest of this video is going to be neutral to negative so one of the things that I did not like is I felt like it was way too overdone, way too staged, way too much foreshadowing. Every single beat that happened in the first, I don't know, a half hour of this two and a half hour movie would play out at some point during the movie. Yes, I guess it does give you that satisfaction of having that thing be fulfilled, that foreshadowing be fulfilled, but for the most part, it just didn't do that great for me. And not only did everything get resolved, but it got resolved in a way that they set up for nothing to happen. All the characters are in the same exact spot they were at the end of the first Wonder Woman movie. So did we really even grow? I feel like the only person who did was probably Pedro Pascal's character, um, but he wasn't even in the first one. So his character had an arc, although it was kind of sudden for the end of it. But for the most part, these characters are in the same exact spot and it just leaves you sort of feeling empty at the end. Not only that, but a lot of this movie does kind of give you an empty feeling that that heart isn't there. Yes, it does have a lot of lessons to teach us and give to us and each single lesson does have its place, which is great for kids and teaching those lessons to pass on and really grow and develop. But for the most part, we wanna see these characters have consequences to their actions. There are no consequences to 90%, if not all of the actions in this movie. Most of it's just sort of happening, and you can be on your phone, you can get other things done, and still understand what's happening in this two and a half hour runtime. It doesn't sink you into this movie. It doesn't pull me into where I was just glued to the screen and could not look away. I 
kind of am glad that I watched this at home and didn't pay for it because the very reason that it just did not entertain me to the point as the first one did. Maybe it's the experience of be being able to watch this big budget movie at home that took away a little bit of that experience, but it's just way too long and there's just no consequences. There's nothing that happens that these characters feel like they're different by the end. And I guess the last thing that I really want to touch on is the advancements uh, that Wonder Woman was able to get. I felt like her, I always had a bad feeling about the golden armor. It never quite sat right with me from the first trailer that I saw it, but for the most part, it was okay. It served its purpose, kind of. I don't know how the character of Asteria sort of used that to survive and how Wonder Woman got it back, how she's even able to use it and then it immediately gets destroyed. That part, it just didn't sit right with me, that gold armor. But for the most part, it was okay. Uh, we also get the invisible jet, which all of a sudden she can make things invisible, which didn't make sense. Um, and then we have her being able to learn how to fly and use her lasso kind of like Spider-Man in a way. I just feel like it's not that great in terms of her abilities that she learns. I mean, I guess it works, I feel like this movie was a setup for Diana to move on and potentially be a love interest for Superman. Now when I say that, it just makes the most sense because Steve Trevor, we lose him again, as well as she sort of decides to move on and she starts gaining a lot more godlike powers, kind of like Superman. So are we possibly foreshadowing the fact that she might end up in a relationship with him? Sure, I mean it's happened in the comic books, as well as on other animated features, things like that. But I don't think that's the best idea. And I think if they're going that direction, they should probably steer clear of it as soon as possible. But I don't really know where else this movie could go. But I don't know, for the most part, I just didn't like the movie. I think a lot of audiences are sort of realizing that maybe it was a little bit overhyped. I don't know if it was because of the current world situation that we're in, that it just didn't sit right with me or it just felt like it was too much. Maybe it was watching it at home. I don't know. It just wasn't a great movie. And I'm kind of disappointed. I mean, I feel like this was one of the real points where DC was strong. And they kind of left us disappointed and sad at the end of it. Um, all I can hope for is that her embodiment in the franchise will continue. Uh, the DC universe that hopefully we'll get some even better stuff maybe out of the Snyder Cut or some other interesting things down the line. But for the most part, this was just a lackluster sequel that just didn't quite do it for me. But I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you. While you're down there, make sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future videos from me. Also, be sure to check out the Animated Apparel Company's YouTube channel. I do have a video over there talking about Wonder Woman some more and where it could possibly go next in the future. Uh, make sure to check out that video. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I hope to see you in the next one.